Welcome back everyone. Well, I just got home from Austria last night and while I was traveling, apparently a new Napoleon trailer dropped. So we're going to take a look at it, break it down a little bit, give my overall impressions of what I think it's telling us about the movie, maybe try to analyze a few of these scenes, not all of them, but a few of them and talk about what it looks like we're seeing. There is also the news that there will be a four hour director's cut, which I'm super excited about because I believe the actual film, the theatrical release is just under two and a half hours which is hardly enough time, even four hours is hardly enough time to tell the story of Napoleon properly. Uh, but we are going to take a look at some of this here. I will put the link down in the description if you want to see the trailer. If you haven't already seen the trailer and you want to see it without my commentary and watch it as it was intended to be presented, you can do that. Going to be getting caught up on some content now as best I can and then headed to France in two weeks. So let's go ahead and dive into this trailer. General, we are discovered. Good. Wait! Spies! It's a trap! Retreat! Alright, so we saw this in the last trailer, and near as I can tell, this must be a, kind of an embellished version of the Battle of Austerlitz. There are stories. Uh, particularly Napoleon's side of things, talking about thousands of men falling through the ice, that they fired on the ice and caused it to crack. Uh, probably wasn't nearly that many. Uh, but keep in mind that part of what you're doing when you're making a movie is you are trying to evoke an experience for the, uh, for the audience. And in order for us to be impressed by this, in order for us to be really blown away by this, it has to be big in scale, right? So even if it wasn't quite that big in reality, I, I think that's probably what we're seeing here. I'm not built like other men. Generals gathered in the masses. So we're getting a little Black Sabbath now, War Pigs. <laughs> That's fascinating. Looks like we're looking back at earlier Napoleon now. He had that long hair, kind of the mullet thing going on uh, earlier in his life. So I'm sure that's what we're seeing here. Move along now. Those in power only see me as a brute, unfit for higher office. So we're obviously getting a, a big chunk of Napoleon's life in this, and we've talked about it with the previous trailer. Uh, Napoleon Bonaparte is in his 20s when some of these events are taking place, uh, and he obviously is being played by a guy, Joaquin Phoenix, who is about as old as Napoleon was when he died in exile. Uh, Siege of Toulon, we're obviously seeing there. That's one of the early kind of breakthrough moments in Napoleon's career. He is a young officer, uh, is not in command at that siege, but his plan is one of the reasons why they win that battle. Uh, his superiors describe his incredible, incredible bravery uh, and tenacity in that fight. But I follow in the footsteps. Oh, there's the pyramids. Oh my gosh. Let, let's at least acknowledge that even if we're going to get some of the history wrong, that this movie looks fantastic. And for that reason alone, I think I'm going to enjoy it. And Caesar. I want to go back and look at that scene again because that was really a cool scene. But I watching them right up to the pyramids. Wow. The great and Caesar. Evil minds that plot destruction. Now I don't know if this is meant. This mummy's meant to be somebody because obviously there was no mummy found in the pyramids. Uh, it the, the mummies had been long since robbed and disappeared. Um, but I'm sure they did find mummies. Uh, we've talked about this in our series on Napoleon in Egypt. Uh, e Napoleon, uh, to his credit, takes a lot of scientists and like archaeologists and, and people like that to study uh, Egyptology. And really, it's Napoleon's invasion of Egypt that's one of the, the big initial steps in our understanding of Egyptology that is really going to flourish in the 19th century. If you look down, you'll see a surprise. Once you see it, you will always want it. Now, Vanessa Kirby is uh, playing Josephine, who's Napoleon's first wife, and she's like 20-some years younger than Joaquin Phoenix, where in reality, Josephine was actually, I think, six years older than Napoleon. 
But you're obviously, I, I've read some places that Josephine is kind of one of the main focuses of this movie. Uh, which makes a lot of sense because she is pretty instrumental in the early parts of Napoleon's career. She gives him a lot of political and societal connections he might not have otherwise had as kind of this outsider from Corsica. Um, he was not, of course, kind of rising from nothing. His family was minor nobility, uh, and his father was an ambassador. But uh, you can see, obviously, we're going to see a lot of the influence that Napo that Josephine has on Napoleon early in his life. And actually got to visit Josephine's son's grave in Munich, um, Eugene. And uh, he, he was, Napoleon, I think, was a pretty good stepfather uh, to him and, and gave him opportunities. And he seemed to have done pretty well with those. He looks a little younger there. It looks so good, though. I must warn you, I will not lead a second in command. Now, one thing I don't like about Joaquin Phoenix's portrayal, at least in what we've seen in the trailer, because all the trailer quotes that we see of him, he's kind of talking like this, and he's real subdued. And Everything I've read about Napoleon, he's this very charismatic guy who seems to have a lot of energy and... Uh, inspires his men, and I'm just not getting that from what we've seen of Napoleon so far. I think this is probably him meeting with the Tsar of Russia. I can't 100% say that's what we're seeing here, but I get that impression from this scene, and that did happen, uh, and they were friends for a while. I will win by fire. I am destined for greatness. And we did see scenes of the execution of Marie Antoinette, who was an Austrian princess and uh, queen of France. Uh, in the first trailer, Napoleon was not there. Uh, and there, there's a lot of kind of uh, embellishment with that as well. But I get it. This is all about big, epic, showing the scenes. And with history in general when you're telling a story especially a story as grand as that as napoleon and these wars of the coalitions in a couple of hours you're gonna change things you're gonna embellish things you're gonna cut things out you're gonna combine characters you're gonna put things out of order so i don't want to be too hypercritical on those things oh yeah and we're gonna actually as soon as this trailer is over i want to go back and watch because there was also a scene that was released from Napoleon's uh, coronation uh, that shows a little more of this. And we're going to watch that and I'll comment more on that I'm part the when we get there. France in the gutter and place it atop my own head. It looks so good, though. Now we see there, we see Napoleon appear, appears to see Napole or to see Josephine kind of laughing it up with another guy and we know she had affairs while he was on campaign and this was a big problem but we also know napoleon did the same thing you want to be great oh it all looks so good i'm gonna go back and look at that scene again just kind of see what we're looking at there you can see the huge gardens there and we got to visit a few palaces in my time in munich and in vienna which is an amazing city by the way um, and you see some of these huge gardens and you, you can see the opulence and the grandeur of these palaces and what they were meant to convey at that time. But you are nothing without me. Hmm. Say it. I believe I speak for all of us. We would all see... So that looks like we're seeing Moscow. So we're at least going all the way from Toulon, which is 1793 up to Russia, which we're talking 1812, 1813, the end of Napoleon's reign. And there's Moscow burning. Whose country are we in? I like that. So I get the impression that, I mean, we're probably looking at Waterloo there at the end. Whose country are we in? Because we see the hillside, and we could also potentially be Something like Austerlitz, where you have a lot of high ground on either side, but I feel like that's probably got to be Waterloo. Yeah, because we see British flags there. Whose country are we in? I want to pause that again real quick. And, yeah, there's the British flag. Uh, that's got to be Waterloo there. And you know, we see the squares being formed. In reality, those squares are bigger than that, um, than what we're seeing in these scenes. 
but uh, it's only shown for a real small, minute second there. But that did happen with a big French cavalry charge at Waterloo that Molly. ended badly. All right, looks good. I want to dive into that scene, though, that we saw uh, released recently of the coronation. Okay, here's the scene that we saw recently, and it uh, took place historically uh, December 2nd, 1804, in the Cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris. Uh, and it was a grand affair, obviously, and um, there's some amazing paintings of this scene, and it seems like Ridley Scott has taken a lot of inspiration from some of these paintings and the scenes that he's shown, uh, and they show this every bit as grand as you would expect. And the Pope was on hand. May God affirm you on his throne. And Christ give you to rule with him in his eternal kingdom. Here comes the crown. Now, I should point out here, a lot's been made about this part where Napoleon grabs the crown and puts it on his own head rather than having the Pope do it, which is how it normally would have been done. And that did happen. However, it was much, it was not a, like kind of a spontaneous spur of the moment thing. It was planned that way. Napoleon was sending a message. It was a very calculated message that he did it on his own merits and not because of God or anyone else. The Pope was aware this was going to happen. It, it wasn't like he snatched it out of the Pope's hand. This was all a planned part of this coronation. And Napoleon did swear an oath on a Bible. So it wasn't like he removed all religious component to this. And the Pope, of course, was present. But Napoleon was all about religious freedom. Uh, he was not going to make there be a state religion, so to speak. And, of course, coming out of the French Revolution, there had been a whole kind of uh, complete run from religion and, and kind of a state atheism almost. And um, They're kind of balancing that out. I found the crown of France in the gutter. I picked it up with the tip of my sword and cleaned it and place it atop my own head. I don't know if he said that. Of course, he doesn't wear it, just going to take it back off. But again, this was all planned, not spontaneous. Now he's going to crown Josephine as empress. The most glorious, the most august Napoleon Emperor of the French. And notice he says Emperor of the French, not Emperor of France, and that is what the title was. Emperor of the French. And intro. Long live the Emperor. Long live the Emperor. Vive l'Empereur. There was a massive choir that performed at this coronation. I think the choir actually had hundreds in it, not just a small choir. All right, so that was pretty cool. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. Add your thoughts. Is there anything you saw in the trailer or in the coronation that maybe I didn't mention that should be mentioned? Really looking forward to this. I will definitely do a deep dive into uh, the movie itself, and we'll do kind of a full breakdown when it comes out. Uh, for streaming, kind of like what I did uh, with All Quiet on the Western Front. Looking forward to that. Ready to get back into some content now that I'm back home. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.